All right, so today we're starting the last chapter, the last of the big three, Mm -hmm. a unity. You know, uh, we talked about self-denial, forgiveness, and final big three, unity. Welcome to the 3D Disciples podcast, where we're working together to develop disciples who display God's love as we deploy into God's world. Join us on this journey by liking, subscribing, and following this channel. I'm your host, Hannah, and alongside us is the pastor of FBC Clarion, Jason Hunter. May Jesus help us climb to new heights. Unity. Um, You said in the sermon about unity, this is also just specifying in the manual, we're in chapter 5, page 63, 64. Um, so Jason, you said in the sermon that Sunday is the most segregated day of the week. Yeah, I, I, I repeated that. I didn't, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. That's kind of a, uh, something you've heard. Yeah. yeah. Something I've heard. Somebody famous said it. I don't yeah. know who said it, but, um, I, I don't necessarily agree though. Cause like I look at it as like, so let me just give you my idea of what unity is, um, that it doesn't necessarily mean uniformity. And so that, you know, we don't have to all look the same, do things exactly the same. Um, we might worship, but we all believe in like the same God. And that Christians can be made up of a diversity of faith practicers from all around the world who focus on the good news of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. And that's like the main focus. Yeah, but uh, but across the nation, if you look at on Sunday morning, mm-hmm. you're going to have an African American church, you're going to have a white church, you're going to have a Korean church, you're going to have a Chinese church, you're going to mm-hmm. have a, a Mexican church, you're going to have That's Puerto true. Rican church, you're going to have a Slavic church, you're going to have a Russian church. Everybody joins, and so the the people who kind of say that realize that that churches, instead of coming together mm-hmm. and figuring out how to deal with the cultural differences between people, mm-hmm. they just congregate with the same with their culture yeah and then they all go off and do church together which is not the picture around the okay th- not the picture of unity revealed in revelation mm-hmm. you know where it talks about people from every tribe every tongue every nation together worshiping yeah. it would be hard for me i guess i get what you're saying now when you bring that up because when i was in harrisburg it was that way but we don't have that we don't have very many cultures here in clarion <laughs> so i don't see it that way but when you bring that up yeah it definitely is how it well, works. But even even theological cultures, mm-hmm. you know, the Pentecostals will gather in one church and the Baptists will gather in another church and the, you know, believer, you know, will cult, will theologically divide too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what my question was going to ask you if you would add or remove anything. So you, you add it to it. <laughs> um, you also emphasize in the sermon Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who is Lord of all, works through all, and is in all. So I was going to add more to that as like I see Sunday mornings as kind of like this, where like as a universal church, we are kind of accomplishing that. We're still trying to do all of God's work. We just, I guess, do it kind of separately. <laughs> but um, what I wanted to add, though, is like, because I guess we all kind of have different theological divisions and stuff, that nobody's doctrine is perfect. And that's kind of where, I guess, we need to look at it from, from each church's point of view, that, you know, you need God's grace in regardless of your doctrine. So, I don't know. That's where I came from with all that. So, what does unity look like? Because I don't foresee all of us getting together. <laughs> The Korean church, the black church, well, <laughs> Pentecostal uh, church. Well, maybe and maybe not. Uh, in the current context, um, I I would agree that looks bleak. Um, though here in Clarion, um, you know, you've probably, I think I've mentioned what we call the League of Pastors, this group, this very mm-hmm. diverse group of pastors that I join with every week and pray with. And we are theologically, doctrinally very diverse. Um, but we come together, we, we are, have a true kinship, a true love for one another, camaraderie, um, pray for one another. And so I'm 
tasting that for the first time in my life. And so that gives me a lot of hope. And, and that group has gotten together and we do some things together. We, every Easter, we've started the last couple of years. We have a, we actually have a service together, a communion service where we together all, so it's what, eight, nine churches at now we get together and we have communion together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's certainly some steps in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe though, um, as the world moves away from the church, and we've talked about, you know, we're in a time when the world is is really on a trajectory away from from Christianity in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. and and the church is becoming, even in America, the church is becoming less and less popular and 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 kind of um, disliked a whole lot more, okay. and um, as that happens. I think what we'll see is that we're going to start to realize that we need one another more than Mm -hmm. we ever have. We've been in a place where we could kind of go it on our own Mm -hmm. because we weren't, uh, we were well accepted. We were welcomed into the community Mm -hmm. and so forth. And I think as I I foresee that waning in our society um, and, and, some might even use the word as we become more hated like Christ was, which mm-hmm. Christ promises yeah, that will does. happen. I do think you'll see us putting aside those those things that have divided us. Well, well, it's just more important for us to be together because we're going to need each other mm-hmm. and, and, and have to support each other more. Mm-hmm. And so I, so persecution tends to bring people together. Yeah. And, and, I, yeah. and I think that will probably at some point happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yay. yay, you know, but <laughs> so the good news is we'll be unified. The yeah. bad news is we're not going to like how we get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but we will we'll understand the importance of each other, though, at yep. that point. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um, I get the other follow up with that I had was like, does it look more spiritual? But based on the way you've just described it and how your league of pastor works, it is physical. You do pray for one another. You do work things out together. Um that you just work as one unit. Yeah, and you, you well, a couple of things. Um, we also, the, the first thing we did in the league, and, and I think this is the first step, is we have to kind of kill the spirit of competition that churches have allowed to kind of creep in, mm-hmm. in, in into their circles a little bit. Mm-hmm. We uh, we have to start having very open conversations with each other, very honest conversations, because like so. So, you know, we all go to seminaries. We all get trained in the particular theology doctrine that our particular seminary teaches. Mm -hmm. And part of that teaching us to understand what we believe, we uh, we usually are taught why these people over here are not as right as we are. (laughs) And so every person who goes to seminary comes out of seminary thinking, well, mine is the most right way. And Mm -hmm. those guys got some things right, but they're wrong on this and they're wrong on this. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, their their seminary is coming out thinking, well, mine is the most right way. And those guys over there have got some things right, but they're wrong on this and they're wrong on this. Mm -hmm. And what I found by talking to these pastors and colleagues about some of our differences, like when we start to actually sit down and, and it usually starts like, well, I know you're X, Y, Z, you know, Baptist, Methodist, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you believe da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, well, no, I actually don't believe that. Like, what? I was taught that you believe this. Well, no, that's not <laughs> what I believe. You know, so we start to have real conversations. Yeah. And then when we start to flesh out these differences, we find out that we thought was a Grand Canyon difference mm. is much more like a little crack in the sidewalk difference. Like, mm-hmm. like the, the dividing line between where I land and where they land we're real, real close to one another. We we mm-hmm. may say it slightly different. We have a little bit of difference, but we're a lot closer to agreeing with each other yeah. than we went in thinking. And so I've had a number of conversations with those with those other pastors on different issues, yeah. just trying to like, why, how do you land here and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's like your unity almost seems like it came from you guys just having conversations instead of just avoiding one another. Yeah, and that's that's cool. So we all we've all been in this scenario before where an evangelist from another denomination that maybe we don't aren't a part of or understand comes up to us and inquires us about our beliefs and then they want to share theirs. And a lot of times that'll end kind of uncomfortably. And so I was talking to another person who's a listener of our podcast and a church member 
and they were sharing a story with me about how um, two Mormon gentlemen came up to him and like kind of had this scenario and he was speaking with them and they invited him to their, they invited him to their church. Well, he said, no, I attend this one. Um, We're doing a 3D journey and a big passage of the 3D journey is about unity actually. And he's like, so do you all believe in the Bible? And they're like, yes. Um, He's like, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? They're like, yes. And then like, but we also believe in the book of Mormon. Said that, uh, you know, I don't really understand that book. I don't know anything about it. I'm not familiar, but at least we can communicate on the fact that we both know who Jesus is. And then they prayed for another, prayed for one another and then like separated. Is that kind of what unity should look like? Can we have unity with other believers that, like, believe Jesus, but maybe not the same? Well, that's going to put me big on the spot. <laughs> so you, we can have unity with other people who believe about Jesus the same thing we believe. Mm-hmm. The tricky part is when people say they believe the same thing, Mm -hmm. but they don't. Mm. And that's like, I think the tricky part where this person was coming from is I don't really understand your religion or who you are. And I think that comes up a lot for at least the memory of our church members is like, I'm not studying what everyone else is doing. So I'm just trying to find what the similar pattern. Right. So you brought up the Mormons. And so... Mm -hmm. um, they will say a lot of things that sound very much like what you and I believe. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, uh, when it gets down to who Jesus is, mm-hmm. um, they don't and won't believe the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, and the, and the big clue to that is uh, when you add anything to the Bible or you take something away from the Bible, that's, yeah. that's usually, and so like these pastors, we all hold to the exact same scriptures. Okay. And so we, you know, like we would all agree that the 66 books of the Bible are the inspired word of God. They mm-hmm. are. And so we, we differ on what's in the Bible. When mm-hmm. we start working with people who have, I got the Bible plus yeah. or minus something mm-hmm. that that's when you're like wait a second we're 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 not you know we're dealing with two different source materials and so we are that's a big clue that we're not going to be talking about the same thing mm-hmm. you know and so that 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 source material what where you get your truth from Mm -hmm. um that lays the foundation and and so yeah so the mormons would say son of god they would say an awful lot of things yeah and i i've recently had some who visited me in my house and for a long time the big pushback against mormonism was well i believe in the trinity Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh we we do too and i was like oh this is this is new because Mm -hmm. they wouldn't have said that and and so when i say i believe in the trinity it means i believe the father the son and the holy spirit are the same substance that they're all exactly the same okay and they're like yeah they all had the same i forget what word they use like purpose Uh i'm like no not same purpose same essence (laughs) and so you know like yeah they all three had the same purpose well that's not what i mean by trinity i mean they are the same essence like the father is god the son is god the spirit is God, mm-hmm. not that they were all trying to accomplish the same thing. Okay, and so they had they had updated some of their teaching in just that area to sound even more like the same. Like yeah. the same. But I guess I just we get we struggle with these interactions because they're very brief. So I mean, you don't mm, have time yes. to like break all that down. So how like is unity not the goal? I guess in those like what's the goal in those interactions then? Like I think the goal in those I, and I think it's still I think it's very similar to sit down and have a conversation yeah. to treat people kindly to to learn what they believe to sh- and to share what you believe. I, I know some other people in our church that they've had uh, two or three meetings now with the Mormons. Invite them in the house, like two hours in their house, mm-hmm. talking about well, here's what you believe, well, here's what I believe, kind mm-hmm. of thing. And so trying to hash that out. But but when you're dealing with people who don't understand what you believe about Christ, really what you're doing is sharing Christ. Mm-hmm. Like, like, this is who Christ says he is. This is what we believe about the Bible. You know, and so in those interactions, it's, you know, it's 
it's the we're trying to disciple we're trying to evangelize in a lot of cases and help mm-hmm. people to understand that that you've got to understand exactly who jesus who was jesus is. yep yeah he wasn't just a prophet he wasn't he was he is god incarnate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so but what happens when we disagree with another christian theology uh, another christian who has Wow. When we disagree with another Christian's theology, do we just avoid that subject with them to maintain unity? Um, I don't think necessarily. Um, Again, my advice in these cases is, and and this kind of goes back to the, to even your first question. I I think when it comes to theology and most, most Christians and and religions, they're going to divide over theology. And so my advice and how I've kind of operated is I build a what I call a three tier system. Level mm-hmm. one, level two, level three. Okay. And like level one are things that I just cannot comprehend, uh, c- compromise on. Mm-hmm. They are they are I believe scriptural. I think they are the heart of Christianity. Like okay, Jesus is the Christ. That means he is that Jesus is not. When we say Son of God, we mean God incarnate, mm-hmm. the God in flesh, that mm-hmm. he's 100% divine and 100% man, man. Mm-hmm. Like those are like the Bible is the inerrant word of God. Like these are things that, that if you tell me, well, I don't believe Jesus is actually God, mm-hmm. then we have to say we're, we, we are we so, unify, yeah. we're so different on that, that I'm, I'm not going to believe you're saved and you're not going to believe I'm saved and we can be friends and I'm not going to punch you in the face, (laughs) but, but we're, we're not in agreement on, on such core issues that, that unity really isn't possibility in Mm -hmm. that. So that's something we would break unity over. Mm -hmm. Um, But they got to be those kind of core issues. Mm -hmm. Then second tier things are things that are really, really important, but I can, I can work with it a little bit, you know, Mm -hmm. I can keep my mouth shut about that or, 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 or whatever, you know, like I can just, I can deal with it. And then, and then like the tier three things are, you know, what type of music do you listen to or, you know, how often do you. tier one for some dirt. (laughs) Well, and, and, and that's the, that's the tricky part because everybody will put different things on different tiers, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but as you, as a person, when you're, so unity, we're encouraged to desire unity. Mm-hmm. And so for me to be unified with you, I have to define those things in my heart, you know, and, and so I can pursue unity with you mm-hmm. and, and I'll know what things are, are just too precious that I, I just realize that we can't, we can't be in the unity on that, that these are things that are important to me, but I can, I can not get upset about it you know i can i can deal with it. and then these are the things that really don't care one you know that I, this is the way i do it mm-hmm. but you know i'm not going to be upset about that at all mm-hmm. so that i can pursue unity with you mm-hmm. same time you got to be doing the same thing to decide whether you can pursue unity with me and and mm-hmm. so you know that's kind of the thing, but I've got, I'm, I'm responsible. It, the Bible tells me as far as it is up to me, mm-hmm. live at peace with all people. Mm-hmm. So I've got to figure out how far I can go mm-hmm. and, and defining those things helps me to say like, Oh, I, I this is, this is where I can go. Mm-hmm. And, um, and what I have found out as I've matured is the things when I first came out of seminary, there were a whole lot of things in tier one, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. tier two was kind of sparse. But as I've gone on, as I've matured, hopefully matured in my faith, as I've mm-hmm. studied the Bible more, and as I've learned to have conversations and appreciate other people who are different from me more, there's been a lot of things that have moved out of tier one and down to tier two. Like, yeah. it's still kind of important to me, but, like, yeah. I, I can, I can cut them the slack and the freedom and and one of the one of the other chapters in this later in this unity i think the last one is called allowance Mm -hmm. and like giving people the space and so because i've thought a lot about giving people the benefit of the doubt giving them space to grow and mature giving them space to figure out and work out their own salvation it's helped me move a lot more things down into that that tier two level where this is important to me and maybe they're they are just got to 
work on that themselves and I can and I can give them the space I can allow them to mm. to have that space to work on that mm -hmm. and see where they end up and mm -hmm. and I know what I believe and why I believe it but I can still be unified with them in spite of those things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that's really helpful um, I'd also never thought about unity in one of the ways that you introduced it which is one that we are all made in his image two we all have the same value and three, we can all be saved by Jesus. When I thought of like the word unity, I thought it meant just like we had to get along. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And so like, have you ever been stuck in that rut too, that like unity is just getting along? Or did you always kind of understand that like we're all the same? Um, well, I think I've grown in, in that understanding. Um, I, the Unity is probably one of the areas that the 3D journey has impacted me the most mm -hmm. is that um, when we were developing it and I, and, and I was kind of looking on, you know, I, I, I said, you know, like that core core question I answered are, you know, wh what are the base things that every disciple, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus, what are those very base things that everybody's got to know and do mm -hmm. and and as i studied that i re you know and then we came up with what we call the big three S deny yourself forgive others and then live in unity and and so it's really it's this is the chapter that i've probably that the 3d disciple has really pushed me to grow on to understand um and to appreciate and to actually think about pursuing more in my mm -hmm. life. Um, and so, yeah, so it started out with that understanding is that, you know, really every human starts at the exact same place. We're all made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what was the other two? We're all made in the image of God. Uh, we all have the same value because we're made in the image, mm -hmm. uh, whether whether people realize it or not, and that we all need to be saved by Jesus. Our, mm -hmm. our only hope is in Christ. And so, like, at the starting block, every human is the exact same. Mm -hmm. And and just realizing, looking at every human as, oh, you're an image bearer. You have the same value that I have and, and the only hope you have is the only hope I have. Mm -hmm. And so it levels the field so much. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it cuts through context. It cuts through culture. It cuts through everything mm -hmm. and enables you to see people like, you know, just as we are. You know? mm -hmm. and, and, and that can go a long ways, you know. And, and so that helps me just accept people a little bit differently yeah i was going to say that almost for me it makes unity easier looking at it that way because you know like you explained it's like a level playing field and it's not like this battle this competition to be like well they're this way and i'm that way and yeah. we just have to get along it's like they're an image bearer of god and so am i and we're both sinners and we both need saved that's that was mind-blowing to me. So I just wanted to share that with the podcast mm. listeners. If they didn't listen to the sermon, kind of what unity really might be. Um, and then there, I was looking through Christian history, and there's kind of a lot of disunity. Yeah, but kind of. <laughs> kind of. And so, like, I think Satan's number one goal, I'm not sure how much time we have. I think Satan's number one goal, this is the last question, is to try to divide us, not only as churches, but as nations, as families, as Absolutely. friends. Like he's just constantly trying to divide us in any way that he can. Because I mean, if you look through the Bible, you see when there's division, then people separate from God. Absolutely. And um, so how can we accomplish unity on like a larger scale? For instance, like within our country. Um, not that you have the answers wow. to that, but yeah. like on larger scale, cause like we're just one person and we do want to try to unify and like, I don't decide whether church splits or not. I don't decide, um, you know what, how everyone in my nation believes, but how can we get it on the larger scale? Well, I really think the hope for the world is the church. Okay. And, um, and I was just reading something the last couple of days and they were talking about unity and um, he, uh, it, it was talking about how churches come together, and and the 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 guy was talking about you know, like collaboration and, and churches working together, and and he's like, well, I can't point that to you in the Bible, 
but but it's in the Bible. Like the Bible doesn't say all churches like churches should work together, should collaborate. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. um, but he's like, but I can point to this this idea of collaboration in the Bible. And and when he said that, I was like, yeah. But the 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 thing is, the division that we're struggling with that causes us to need to collaborate. That's definitely not in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so the division that we experience today and that we're trying to overcome isn't God's plan. <laughs> and we mm-hmm. have to and so I think the first thing the church has to do is accept the division that we have is really pretty unbiblical mm-hmm. and, and ungodly. Um, I do believe it was this, the plan of Satan, not like the mm-hmm. I think I said this. Um, or something to this effect, like we've all heard the, you know, the great, I guess, Hitler or whatever had this, you know, his strategy was divide and conquer, you know, and, and it may have been lots of generals throughout history, this whole idea of, you know, an army can't fight battles on multiple fronts. When mm-hmm. you start to divide them, you can conquer them. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe that's out of the pit of hell. I mean, I really believe that whole idea of divide agree, and conquer yeah. is, is right out of Satan's playbook. He's That's what he's tried to do in the church. That's what he's doing well in our country. And so I, I think the hope we have to do it on the larger scale is we've got to start doing it on the smaller scale. Mm-hmm. Down to people in the churches, disciples, and that's why we're talking about this disciples every single disciple needs to approach their life my job as far as it is up to me live at peace slash unity mm-hmm. with as many people as i can especially <laughs> my brothers and sisters in the church mm-hmm. you know and I, I and and i was we were just talking with our pastors i was we we have had a new pastor join our league and i was talking with him just today actually um, and uh, and we were talking about how we're all coming together, and I was like, welcome him, so glad he was, you know, joining us and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I and my thing was, if we as the pastors, <laughs> the teachers, can't live in unity together, mm-hmm. how do we ever expect our churches to live in unity together? And if we don't, and if we're not, ex- you know, showing how to live in unity with other Christians, how do we expect? How do we get up and teach that to our to our congregation? Hey, you're supposed to all be getting along in here. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're 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 supposed to really care about each other, and be unified, and that's just something we haven't taught mm-hmm. um, and really pushed um, for a whole number of reasons. Um, and uh, and I see some sparks of that uh, across the country. I think um, uh, a guy I listened to um, they, they, we talk about church eras you know, like different, different eras in the church. And, and they, and one of them defined called the golden age of denominationalism was like in the 1980s and the 1990s where, you know, every town had all the denominations in the town. And when you moved to a town, if you were Methodist, you found the Methodist church. If you were Baptist, you found the Baptist church and you just stuck with your denomination. Mm -hmm. One of the great things that I'm very excited about in a lot of ways in our current culture is denominate denominationalism is dying mm-hmm. and so you don't see and so so there's a lot of old timers who will who will kind of bemoan like you know loyalty to our cause loyalty to our movement loyalty to our denomination is mm-hmm. waning and they're right because they'll people they'll be at the baptist church this week and if they don't like that they'll go to the methodist church and they'll yeah. jump you know they'll denominations mean very little to to much younger generations than me. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's a good thing. Mm. Um, really, I mean, it's going to make some new, we're going to have to figure out how to negotiate some things. Yeah. But I, I think that's a positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, like I said, as we get to the place where we're going to need each other more, as that dies away, mm-hmm. I, th- I think a new age of unity is coming although we're probably not going to be crazy about how we get there. <laughs> right, as we discussed, yeah. And um, I was going to say, the kind of way you're looking at it is the church is kind of be the hub. I mean, th- again, that goes back to, like, this is so odd how this works, but that the lighthouse is the church, yeah. not necessarily this church, but any church, because how are your families going to stay together? Well, you come to the church and you learn how to work through a marriage. You learn how to raise your children Absolutely. by talking to other church members. How's your nation going to stay together? Well, we have, like, we've talked about the Baptist, Baptist Resort Network, 
and the missionary trip that we went on, like you collaborate with other and then you have further reach and further stretch. So like, I think that's a really great way of looking at it as the church is this lighthouse where everything else can spread out from. Well, and, and the outside people outside the church for, for too long now, um, has heard church X make fun of church C (laughs) Mm-hmm. Or ridicule Church B, mm-hmm. or, or or whatever you know, and 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 the Catholics poke fun at the Baptists, and the Baptists poke fun at the Presbyterians. And the I don't Presbyterians even get those jokes, <laughs> you, 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 you know. And we've done that for so long, and uh-huh. so and so for us to start all coming together mm-hmm. and doing things together, and having services together, and serving alongside of one another. Um, I think we have a chance to, to show a different face mm-hmm. uh, to the world. And, and and my estimation is is the unity of the first first century church is what made their society take notice of Christianity. Like that was one of the truest marks of discipleship. That something about this Jesus fellow who had united very very diverse groups had broken down all cultural barriers, and these people are now worshiping and eating in each other's homes and all that kind of stuff. And that wasn't perfect. They struggled. But that that all these different people were all claiming to be brothers and sisters and following this guy named Jesus. Mm-hmm. That I think that's what society is like. Oh, that's different than any other quote unquote religion we've seen so far. Yeah. So I guess the prayer is that the Lord can work through us all and in us all. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Our prayer is that you've heard something today that will help you be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. We also want to encourage you to make sure you take your next step in your discipleship journey by considering what it is you would do about what you heard today and then go and do it. Finally, we want to invite you to join us at 1030 on Sundays, either at our Main Street campus in downtown Clarion between Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's or online at fbcclarion.com. God bless.